Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this time I'm going to have a look at key operated switches and uh, normally what they're used for, which is emergency lighting. Now I've seen switches before in other videos and here we have a double pole switch and this happens to have a neon indicator in as well. And if you have a look on the back we've got the various terminals here and just have a closer look there. And what we've got at the top here we've got an L1 and an N1, L2 and N2. And the deal with these is that in the off position none of these terminals are connected together at all. And when it's in the on position, such as on the front here, L1 and L2 are connected together, and then N1 and N2 are connected together. And it's generally intended that you should have your power coming in on the L1 terminal here, so that would be your line, and then when the switch is turned on it simply connects that through to the L2 one over there. And at the same time you would have your neutral coming in over here, and when the switch again is on it connects it through to the outgoing terminal there. So it would simply be uh, line and neutral connected in here. When the switch is off, well that's the end of the story. When the switch is on it just simply metallically connects inside the two together and the two together there. So then the appliance or whatever is connected here with the line and neutral obviously is connected to the supply and will switch on. And in this case we've got the little neon indicator at the top so that will also be connected to the power at the same time and the thing will light up. This also has connections for the uh, earth over here and another one over there. So that's pretty much all the switch does. It's simply connecting uh, terminals together or not, depending if it's on the on or off position. And so this one just has a normal button on the front. Now a key operator switch is pretty much the same deal. And if you have a look on the back of this example, we we'll see it's got very similar terminals there. So again, we've got uh, L1 and L2, and again N1 and N2. So it's the same situation as we had with the white switch there in that it's in the off position nothing's connected anywhere. And the idea here is you connect your line in neutral here to the bottom terminals and when it's switched on it will just connect those two there together like that. And at the same time then you've also got your neutrals connected through which would connect the N1 and N2 again, through like that. So functionally it's exactly the same as the white switch we saw. The only difference is that on the front it doesn't actually have a thing you can press, it's just got this plate with a hole in. And these are operated by a key, surprisingly enough, hence the name. Key is normally supplied with it, here's the key for this one. So to switch it on off you simply take the uh, appropriate key, place it in the hole, and then you can switch it on and off as required. So that's pretty much it. So in terms of actual operation it's either pressing a button or just moving the particular key, and then you can of course take the key away and leave it in whatever position you'd set previously. Now this is actually on its own plate. This one is designed to mount inner plate with other things, so other switches and things. And typically these are used for emergency lighting. And the reason they're used with this key is because uh, emergency lights need to be powered all the time and have a continuous supply. The idea being that when there's a power failure then the light will switch on using batteries inside the device so that you can actually see where the emergency exits and whatever are. And these are normally used so you can turn off the supply to that light to confirm that the batteries are still working. And obviously once you've finished that then you can switch it back on again. And clearly you don't want any old person just coming along and just pressing the switch on the wall randomly, turning off the power to the emergency lighting so the batteries run down. And then when the lighting was actually needed in some kind of emergency the batteries run down and it doesn't work. So it's purely there as a mechanism to stop uh, other people tampering with it. But uh, electrically though it does exactly the same thing as any other switch. It's simply the fact that you need some kind of key or other device to actually switch it on and off. So let's have a look at how emergency lights are usually wired. Now unlike normal light fittings which have a switch so you can switch them on and off whenever you like, emergency lights require power permanently, so 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And at the very simplest level you just have the three conductors, so the uh, line there, the neutral, and of course the earth as well, just coming through and then into the fitting which would have typically just three terminals. So just draw those in here. And then it's just a matter of connecting the line neutral and earth to the various terminals. 
And that means that the uh, emergency fixture receives power all the time. And the whole point of these things is that uh, when the power fails, a battery inside the fixture then will switch the light on so you can see where the exits are. And the batteries typically last for up to three hours, or one hour in some cases. Now in terms of the switch here, as we've seen this uh, switch before, then normally that would be placed in the supply to the actual emergency light fitting. So the switch would actually be placed somewhere in here. So that normally the power will be supplied to the fitting, but in the event you wanted to actually test that the batteries inside are working, then it would just simply disconnect the connections here. And then power is disconnected from the fitting and of course the uh, light will turn on. And that's the most sort of basic level, but uh, there are a couple of other arrangements which are commonly used. And this really comes into the different types of emergency fitting that you can buy. Now the most basic type as we saw there is called a non-maintained. emergency light fitting, or luminaire as the correct term actually is. And this type means that the light is only on when there's some kind of power failure. So most of the time, if the power is on, that's a normal operation, then the light is actually off. And then if there's a power failure, then the light is on from its own internal batteries. And when the power is actually on, that's what's actually charging up the battery in the fixture so that the uh, thing is continuously maintained at a level of high charge. And of course, if the uh, power stays off for an extended time over many hours, then of course the battery will run down and then it won't work anymore either. But of course, by that time, it's expected that people have already left the building and uh, obviously the problem would be removed. Now, the other type uh, than the uh, non-maintained is simply called a maintained. And the difference here is that when the power is on, the light is also on, and that's obviously powered from the main supply. And when the power is off, then the light is also on, but of course in that case it's powered from the battery inside. So in this case, the light's on all the time. It doesn't matter whether the power's on or off, the light remains on permanently. And that was really useful. Say so you might have a set of stairways that don't have any windows or anything. So you need the light on all the time just to see where you're going. And of course, you also need the light to remain on in some kind of power failure so you can see how to actually evacuate the building. So that's the two main types of uh, emergency light fixture. Both of these require the permanent power supply that we saw previously. And that's to ensure that the battery inside is charged and kept charged all the time. And just as we saw previously, you would also have the uh, little switch as well. So you can actually disconnect the power to it for testing purposes, and then it will switch over to the battery and you can ensure that the battery is still capable of powering the light. And in the case of the non-maintained one, it also checks that the light is actually working because of course uh, it may have actually broken or failed in some other way, even though the battery may still be functional. Now the maintained variety, uh, it's important to note that the, although the light is on all the time, the brightness of the light may well be considerably less when it's running on the battery, simply because it uh, doesn't actually have to be as bright. And when on the mains, it's probably at full brightness on the battery, it's at a considerably less one. Bearing in mind, it's only really for emergency use, so you can at least see how to get out of the building. The fact it's lit up to some excessively high level isn't particularly important if you're just wanting to get out of the building. Now both of these uh, typically only have one light inside and it used to be uh, equivalent to a little fluorescent tube, typically an 8 watt fluorescent tube. Uh, the newer models generally have uh, LEDs inside because of course they're cheaper and much more reliable. And uh, some of these of course can be obtained with two or more lights in. You can get some which are essentially a box on the wall and it has some sort of spotlight head things on the top which can then be angled to different areas, so it might be useful in a large area like a factory or something. But uh, it doesn't really matter what type they are, the fact is that uh, all the lights either are on or they're off, depending on whether it's the maintained or non-maintained variety. Now there is a third variety which is called a 
combined. And this will have two or more lamps inside. And the deal here is that at least one of these is the emergency lighting one, very similar to the uh, ones we had up here. And then others inside, either one or more, will be used for normal lighting purposes. So it's sort of a normal light and the emergency light all combined together in the same fitting. And it has, say, two or more lamps, one for the emergency function and then another one or several for the normal lighting function. And again, they can be uh, switched separately as well. And these can be maintained or non-maintained. So in the case of non-maintained one, it'll be a light fitting which would, say, be on or could be switched on off at any time. And then it would have a separate emergency part inside with a separate lamp, which is the one that we should turn on when the power failed. In the case of the maintained one, it may be that when you turn your normal light on, it also turns on the actual emergency light part as well. But when the power fails, only one lamp inside will actually stay on to light the way to the exit, and the others, of course, do not work. Now, many fittings you can buy uh, actually can be set up in either mode, so maintained or non-maintained, which saves the manufacturers making a whole different fitting that you have to actually buy. Now, what you'd find in these types typically is four terminals for connection. So I'll just draw those in there. And the terminals will be switched line, line, neutral, and the earth, of course. And in terms of the uh, little uh, switch here with the uh, key thing in it, then you would install that in the main supply to the light fixture. So you would have the line coming in, your switch here, and the line, of course, goes over to the line terminal in the fitting itself, and the neutral as well. Now you can switch the neutral as well if you want to. These are double pole switches, and we'll draw that in in this case. It's not always necessary to do that because again, if you switch off the line, the battery will obviously switch in because the power has gone away. But uh, obviously that's just an option. The earth, of course, never switched. That just goes straight in. Let's draw the uh, switch in as well. Now, if you connect it in this fashion, then this is essentially the non-maintained mode. And this is where the power is connected in here. And whilst the power is connected, the light is off. So it doesn't actually appear to do anything. It's just charging the battery. When the power fails or the little switch here is turned off, then the battery will take over and switch the light on. And that's your non-maintained variety. Now, to convert this into a maintained one, this is where the light will be on all the time and, of course, remain on on the battery when the power failed. All you've got to do is connect the line and the switch line together. So you simply put a link in here like that. And then you're basically putting power to both of these. And this uh, connects inside so the light remains on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that's what you do, say, in a stairwell or something which had no natural lighting. Now, another option you can do with these is to have the power coming in as we've got here and then put an additional switch in so you can actually turn the light on and off so that might save a bit of energy or something and still maintain that uh, emergency feature as well and that's very similar to this but uh, what you need to do is to put that extra switch in so here's the uh, four terminals again and just as before the uh, various conductors will come into the fitting there and we'll just draw the emergency testing switch as well. So again, that's the non-maintained mode, so the light's uh, never on. And what you can do is to actually install here a separate switch. So you'd have a join in the wire here, and this could all be in the same switch box with that little thing on the one side and a normal switch next to it. And if you put a switch in here, again, that's just a two terminal switch there, as we've seen in other videos, then what will happen is that if the power here is off, as in with your testing switch there, then no power gets here whatsoever. The light uh, obviously has no power, and then it will take over and run on the battery. That's used for testing purposes, but assuming that that was actually connected through, so that'll be power on all the time. Then in this configuration, it's just charging its internal battery and keeping it maintained there. The light is actually off, but if you then close this switch here, you're then basically connecting those two together and then the light will turn on, 
and of course stay on until the switch here is opened. So this gives you an option of controlling the light fitting using a normal light switch, so you may not actually want it on 24 hours a day, you might just want to turn it on and off when needed, but it will still switch on in the event of any kind of power failure, so of course enabling it to be illuminated in the event of an emergency without people having to grovel on the wall to find a switch to actually switch the thing on. So if there's a power failure and there's smoke and flames boiling out of a room next door, well clearly you don't want to be trying to switch the light on, you just want to be getting out of the building as fast as possible. So that's a useful thing, and most of the lights now do actually come with this configuration. So you can either just wire them up on the three for non-maintained, put a permanent link inside the fitting for the maintained version, or just take an extra two wires out to a switch, and then that gives the people there an option to switch the thing on and off as they want. And then your little switch there is only used for basically testing purposes to ensure that the battery is still working. Tests on those, there's normally two types. Uh, there's the sort of uh, more frequent test, say once a month, where you just simply turn it off, confirm that the light turns on when the power has failed, and then just simply switch this again so that the mains is restored. And then the full test is where you would actually turn this thing and disconnect the power for a three hour period, and make sure that the light remained on on the battery for the whole of the three hours. And of course if it didn't you would have to replace the batteries or do something else to repair the thing. So a quick look there at emergency lighting and how it's actually wired up. So the main thing to remember is that it requires a permanent power all the time so that the battery inside is continuously charged. And optionally you can have a switched line going in, either connected via a switch somewhere or just linked to the permanent line. And that will give you the option of uh, controlling the light or converting it to a maintained type which stays on all the time regardless of whether there's power or not. And the little switches here, there's various manufacturers that make these, but they're all pretty much the same deal. Some of the keys do vary slightly in design, but generally if you buy the switch it comes with a key anyway, so it's not really an issue. And this particular one is what's called a grid variety, so it's uh, just the actual switch part itself, and then you buy a front plate, say with three or four holes in, and fit this and other switches and things in there as well. And it's fairly common to uh, put this, say, with a normal light switch next to it for the standard lighting. And in some cases you can actually put like a red indicator next to it so that when you turn this off the red indicator would switch on and indicate that the power had been disconnected to alert people not to leave it in that condition for an extended time. And uh, another thing just to mention is that uh, if you're going to wire these in make sure that this switch only cuts the power to the emergency light fittings and not all of the other light fittings on the particular floor unlike in a building that I have to go and do maintenance in fairly often where the bennies that uh, actually wired it in actually decided to put these things so that when you switch it off it doesn't just cut power to the emergency fittings, it cuts power to every single light on the entire floor, meaning it's extremely dark and therefore fairly unsafe when it comes to actually testing the emergency lighting. So unfortunately we have to do the lighting test there only in the daytime. So uh, there we go, that's a quick look there, and until next time, thanks for watching.